Hello and welcome back to some more The Great Dark Beyond Reveals. Uh, up today is Druid, and if Death Knight had me believing somewhat more in UFOs, Druid has got me convinced that it's just a smear on the, the lens. Anyway, more of that to come. We have been teased actually quite a few Druid cards already in the first reveals. We've seen Distress Signal already. Four mana Arcane Spell Summon, two random two cost minions, refresh two mana crystals. Very good. If you spend this on four, you're effectively getting two mana back, in which case it's two mana summon two random two cost minions. As I mentioned at the time, mana cheat gets diluted like as the game goes on. So if you're cheating just a small amount of mana later, it's worse than cheating out a lot of mana later. I know, Cal Surprise. And Distress Signal starts to meet that criteria to some degree. Uh, there was also Starlight Reactor, which was after you cast an arcane spell, you recast it. So clearly, and this was a starship piece. Clearly, the intention of the starship for Druid is some sort of arcane spell Druid deck. And then the payoff for building the starship was Exarch Offar, a Draenei that, if you're building a starship, you get three different arcane spells that reduce their cost to two. And I think on the, the highlight for this, or the whatever you want to call it, the, the teaser for this card, it showed that you would get arcane spells from different classes. Which is important because there's not a lot of arcane spells in Druid. I haven't done this for one of the other reveals, but these are the only three arcane spells available to Druid in the standard set as we speak. These Bottomless Toy Chest, Sparkling Fire, and Sleep Under the Stars. Two of these actually do see some play, them being Sleep Under the Stars and Bottomless Toy Chest. But... You know, it, it's like, would you take these out and put them into your Starship deck? But we're going to have to see what the, the rest of the the uh, Starship deck is going to be. I will say, though, that since the Arcane Repeater is random target, it's not random enemy, it's just random, Sparkling File is probably not going to see any play in this deck because it might hit your own face, it might hit your own minions. So I kind of discredit that card already. So let's see some new Arcane spells. Astral Phaser, two mana, Druid Arcane spell. Choose one. Deal two damage to two random enemy minions, or make one dormant for two turns. Wow, this card is bad. Like, horribly bad. The first part of the choose one effect is Cleave, which is a classic card in Hearthstone. Like, you know, it's a legacy card, but wasn't even that good back then. And it's now on Astral Phaser. The second part is Red Card, but worse. And Red Card only costs one mana. It does see a bit of play, actually, Red Card in... Well, it's all playing Window Shopper, Demon Hunter to slow the game down. Or to make your Mag Therodon go dormant again. Astral Phaser, it has to be in any minion that you put dormant. So it has a, a tighter target than Red Card and costs one more mana. That is awful. What an awful, awful card. Clearly the intention is that you play this with Starlight Reactor and because it says random enemy minions, you don't have to worry about the random targets because it will always hit opponents and minions. But even combined with this, this is 5 mana, 3-3, three, three, deal 2 damage to 2 random enemy minions or make 1 go dormant, oh no sorry, 4 enemy minions or make 2 go dormant for 2 turns. I don't think that's unfair enough for 5 mana. This card is actual hot trash. Alright, but we have some more arcane spells. We have Arcanite Revelation. 1 mana arcane druid spell. Draw a card. If it's a spell, it costs one less. We've kind of had cards like this before with the draw a card and then a conditional effect goes on based on the card that you draw. Uh, currently in standard, it's fetch, which is draw a minion. If it's a beast, you draw a spell. Fetch is seeing zero play right now. In part because normally in your Hearthstone deck, you put both minions and spells. Uh, also, sometimes you put minions that aren't other tribes in the case of fetch which kind of means that fetch is for the most part one mana draw a card does one mana draw a card see play in hearthstone not normally there are some like really freak instances where it is good enough to put into the deck it's normally when there is some sort of miracle deck out there in which case thinning down your deck below 30 cards and one mana spells that maybe like have a effect secondary because you've cast the spell from another card, is actually good enough to see some play. So maybe this is the case of a druid. Perhaps this card has got a secondary effect that is good enough because of the fact that casting spells in druid is fine. Maybe it leads to some sort of miracle deck. So I actually think this card is not as bad as the other one, nor do I think it's as bad as fetch. I will say though, since this is probably going to go in the starship deck, since the starship deck is the arcane enabler, you're putting minions and spells in your deck. So there's a pretty good chance that you're not going to draw a spell with your arcanite revelation. In which case, you paid one mana, draw one, which is not very good. If you play one mana, draw a spell, and it costs one less, that is fine, but it's not particularly exciting, is what I'll say about this. 
with the Starlight Reactor, though, I guess this is where, like, you're really looking at playing it. Four mana, three, three, draw two cards. If either of them are spells, you get a one mana discount. Uh, it's not bad, right? You don't get hit by the random effect again because it's a selfish effect. You know it's only going to hit your side of the field. Fine, not inspiring, but it's certainly okay. Would four mana, three, three, draw two cards see some play in standard? Probably with the, the mana discount. So again, though, it really, really does rely on you having the Star like Relactor on the field. All right, more arcane spells. And actually, this one I think is good, memeing aside. Cosmic Phenomenon. Five mana druid arcane spell. Summon three, two, three elementals with taunt. If your board is full, give your minions plus one, plus one. Okay, this is actually a really, really powerful effect for five. You're getting, at the very least, if you don't do any of the bells and whistles attached to it, you're getting six, nine taunt stats on five. It is spread wide, which means they're normally a bit easy to deal with some sort of cleaving type card or some sort of AoE damage. Uh, but it's not the end of the world. Just as, like, again, to peg this to another card, Reign of Toads did see a little bit of play. I can't remember when Reign of Toads actually came out, but back in the past. Not too much, and to be honest with you, it's saw some play because of the overload effect. But this was six mana, summon three, two, fours, with taunt, and it overloaded for three. So for one mana, you got one more health on the minions. But you had to pay for this. You had to pay the overload three. Well, that's a pretty brutal overload, right, on this card. You don't have to do that with the Cosmic Phenomenon. You only have to meet its criteria to get, like, the super turbocharged effect. There is no downside to the five mana, two, three, two, threes with taunt. So I think this card is actually reasonably okay do i think that is actually unfair enough for standard right now no i don't but you know if you can hit the full effect now you're talking and is it hard to hit the full effect well it's not if you play a starlight reactor on the board before it if you can get starlight reactor up on the board you play cosmic phenomenon that fills your board right you will get the six minions from cosmic phenomenon you'll have the one minion of the starlight reactor and then suddenly you'll buff every minion on the board with plus one plus one in total that gives you 22 28 of stats with all but four, four of it having taunt. That's a pretty spooky situation. That is getting into drum circle territories. It does require you to have eight mana to do this, unless you can discount this by some other means. Uh, but actually, I think if this arcane package is going to work, this is one of the key cards that will make it work. And to be completely honest with you, I'm actually not sold on the UFO package, as we will get to later. But maybe you put Starlight Reactor and some of these arcane spells in some sort of token deck. You just try and fill the board with tokens and use Cosmic Phenomenon almost like a Drum Circle S card. Maybe that's good enough? I, I'm not entirely certain. Also worth mentioning though, if you are going to try and build this Starship deck, there is a chance that one of your board slots is going to be taken up by the Starship. It does count as a, a minion slot, so you can only have six other minions on the board. Which is actually good for Cosmic Phenomenon because it means you have less minions required on board before you can fill it to get the, the effect. Because if you can get this with the effect, it is actually really, really big tempo swing. Now, if you're going to try and do this with other means, you could use something like Bumbling Bellhop. I'm always going to try and sing the praise of this card until you finally see some good play. Uh, this is a 5-cost spell, so it triggers the Bumbling Bellhop effect. Bumbling Bellhop hits two board, parts of the board, which makes it easier for you to fill the board. So maybe you run this in sort of a tokeny deck. Uh, just also as a placeholder card, there are a few cards in Druid, especially, that have like tokeny suit synergies, like the, the Treant-like decks. Maybe you just run a Treant deck with Cosmic Phenomenon and a few of the Arcane cards in there. It's like a few drop cards in the deck. And just try and play this token deck of swarms of the swarms of minions. Maybe that is going to be the best way to get the most out of these cards. I'm not sure though. Other Arcane spells, now we're getting pretty chunky. We have the Final Frontier. 7 mana Arcane Druid spell. Discover a 10 cost minion from the past. Set its cost to 1. Wow, this is a big, big spell. Classically, we've seen a few of these... I say classically. Recently, we've seen a lot of these cards saying from the past on the effect. Stuff like False Disciple, Maestra, Wakanol. Most of these haven't seen any play in like any competitive deck. False Disciple started a little bit playing Highlander Priest. Just because it is a card, to be honest with you. It was kind of like that 27th to 30th card. Some people ran it, some people didn't run it. The other two, Maestra specifically, has not seen any play. It's just not unfair enough. It's too big a tempo downturn to play a 5 and a 6-5. And then get a card that you're not going to play for a few turns down the line. So that is just too weak. And Wakanol, honestly, there is just better decks out there for Paladin. They don't really need this value card in those decks. Now, Final Frontier has something that none of these cards have. They cheat 
the minion that they generate, or they cheat the card that they generate. I guess to some degree, Whack a Mole had that because it gives one one on stats instead of giving a mana cheat. So it does cheat to some degree. And actually, I do kind of think Whack a Doll is probably the best one of these here to some degree. But Final Frontier, you're finding a 10 cost minion and you're reducing its mana cost by nine. That's a pretty big deal. How big a deal? Well, if you go through 10 drops of the past, and I haven't done a slide of all the 10 drops from the past because there is a lot of them. There are a lot of good ones though, like seriously, seriously good ones. You could hit Kun, the Forgotten King, for example. Would you like to play one mana Kun that refreshes 10 of your mana crystals? Yes, you probably would do. That's a pretty good deal for you to cheat out a ton of value. Would you like a one mana Tarantus? Probably you would like a one mana Tarantus. That'd be a pretty good deal. Then remember you have the neutral cards. You could get Raidbox and Nixir, which was one of like, like the classic cards from the, I think it was the past rotation, right? That had Raidbox and Nixir in it. Very good card for like controlling the board and potentially just being a big value beat stick to put down on the board. Uh, if you're getting really, really fruity, you could get Makathu now and try and beat your opponent with Mechathu instead in standard. That's a 10 drop that you could probably find from the past. Yogg-Saron, if you want to cast a ton of arcane spells, assuming this is in the arcane package, go find yourself a Yogg-Saron and pray to Yogg that you can win the game. Uh, I finally on here, I put the Jailer, which in its own right isn't a particularly good card, but if you put this in some sort of value druid deck and you put Kil'jaeden in your deck, you could Jailer your deck, destroy it, and then play Kil'jaeden, and you would always have this immune 10-10 on the board. Do I think that's actually good value? No, I think for the most part, you'll never grab the Jailer. Now, I will say there are a lot of these minions as well that are just stat lines. They don't really have good effects on them. But because you discover, I think generally speaking, you're guaranteed to get one good 10 drop. For the most part, you're going to get one good 10 drop. So I think this is actually a pretty big value card to put in your deck. The real, real problem for this card, though, is it's 7 mana do nothing. Can you play 7 mana do nothing in standard? It's going to be hard. I will say Druid is one of the decks that can probably do this because they have ways to mana cheat beyond 10 mana crystals and also just cheat out, generally speaking, mana. If you get to 16 mana crystals with playing two new heights or even beyond that, then it is more tolerable to play a seven mana spell that does nothing. And actually, you need eight mana to complete the full combo of the card to play the one cost as well. It's more tolerable to do that in Druid than some of the other classes. So... I actually can see this Final Frontier seeing some play. Having looked at the, the cost, uh, sorry, the 10 pool past minions, uh, I think it's actually pretty strong. There is also Mr. Vista out there. Maybe you put this in some sort of value Mr. Vista deck and you try and cast one of these Final Frontiers while you do Mr. Vista and you get another 10 drop from the past. It will be a random one, but you know, value, value, value. Eventually you're going to break your opponent's back, right? Anyway. Now you might be asking, why have I not seen the other Starship piece yet? Well, I was leaving the worst to last. Shatari Cloakfield, 2 mana 1, 3, elusive. Your first spell each turn costs 1 less. And it's a Starship piece. Oh boy, this card stinks. Horrible, horrible card. Uh, like all the Starship pieces, this card is understated for the cost. Realistically, a 1, 3 stat line in standard, you're probably looking at a 1 drop minion. So you're really looking for the effect to make up for the fact that you're paying one extra mana for this card. And simply speaking, that doesn't happen. We have seen cards like this, by the way, in the past of the first something you play each turn costs one less. These were Pint Size Summoner, which was a, for a minion, and Game Master for a secret. I don't think either of these really saw any play whatsoever. I will say Game Master came out at the same time as Deck of Lunacy, which is why this card never saw any play, because it was a minion and not a spell in Mage. Uh, I think pint-sized, maybe some zoo decks tried to run this, but I don't think it got too much traction at the very least. Either way, both of these cards have better stat lines from than Shatari Cloakfield. I do appreciate that you're getting four stats on the pint-sized summoner, and you're getting four on the Shatari, but you definitely want them split as 2-2 two, two, or 3-1, I think, rather than 1-3. One, 1-3 three. One, three is such a, a low aggression stat line for your card. Now, I guess the idea of this is to be statted in such a way that it's going to stay on the board for longer, but it's just not cheaty enough. It's not unfair enough. Like, assuming you're going to say, again, there's been plenty of 1 mana 1 3s printed in the past. If you cheat one spell with this, and you can only cheat one spell at a time, you get one mana cheat on the first spell you play. That makes it basically a 1 mana 1 3. You get that value back again from the card that you 
uh, spent for it. Like, you overspent for one mana, you get one mana value back again. It works out equal. You say, though, that it works out equal, it does mean you've played a one mana 1-3 one, elusive. Would a one mana 1-3 one, elusive see play in standard? No, he wouldn't. There's no kind of else chance that I would see play in standard. So, realistically, you need this to discount two spells, which means you need this to live for two turns. This won't live for two turns. It simply won't happen. And even if it does, cool, you've discounted one more mana. It's not a huge deal, this card. It's like, it's super, super minor, super weak. I will say Druid is the class of cheap spells, though, or one of the classes of cheap spells. You could play your Shatari Cloakfield and then instantaneously play a Cactus Construct for zero, and you get a 1-3 and a random 2-cost minion for 1-1 one, one stat line. Oh, it's value, it's good. You could play Frost Lotus Seedling maybe a turn later for some big draw. You can play a Bottomless Toy Chest for one turn later and get another copy of a spell damage thing. Uh, by the way, none of these are arcane spells, so the, the real idea of this kind of guess is that it works with Distress Signal, turns it into three mana, refresh two mana crystal summon two random two cost minions, aka it's kind of like one mana summon two random two cost minions. Now, you need five mana to do this, which is just not worth it. Again, you're diluting the mana cheat as you go through the game. At turn 5, is cheating 1 mana really worth it? For a lot of cases, no, it's not really worth it. Especially when you're jumping through hoops with two different cards. No, crazy. Silly. Uh, Arcanite Revelation is probably the other big payoff for this, that you could play your 2 mana 1-3 and then instantly Arcanite Revelation on the same turn. Turns this into a 2 mana 1-3 elusive draw a card. Maybe draw a card and reduce its cost by 1. If you got all the perfect scenario on this card, would it see play? Probably. You probably would see a bit of play on 2 mana 1, 3, draw a card, reduce its cost by 1. But it requires such a specific set of circumstances to happen for you to do this. And it's not going to happen more often than not, so there's just no way this works. Uh, finally, you might point out as well that, you know, Mage, you, we can Taurus into Mage as a Druid. Do any of the Mage cards really care to be cost, uh, cast with 1 cost less once? No, it's simply irrelevant. Sure, you play Seabreeze Chalice. Cool, I've done zero mana deal two damage. That's it. Effectively, this card becomes two mana one three do two damage randomly split amongst all enemies. Would that see play in standard? No, this card is super, super, super weak. And now putting all this together again, this is all the starships you're going to get for Druid. By the way, I couldn't find any reference to what the Druid starship is going to be called. I think even the Hearthstone team were just like, ugh. I don't even think they could be bothered revealing this. Here are your four starship pieces. I will say, unlike any of the other starship pieces so far, I basically said that I don't think you'd put the Dimensional Core in those decks. This is the one exception where I think you probably would put Dimensional Core in your deck. You might even actually run all four of these cards. I'm not sure. But you probably want to protect the Starlight Reactor. This is like really the, the key part of this card, the ability to duplicate arcane spells. If you're trying to keep that card alive then the best thing to do is to put divine shield on it to stop it just getting attacked by something and smoked so dimensional core in this package would probably make some degree of sense clearly then the intention is that you generate your launch blah, you, you fire the ship and you, you know you have a shatari cloak field the starlight reactor a dimensional core in there and you get a seven eight in stat line and then if you cast a spell which by the way is discounted by one one mana discount it gets discounted by one it gets cast twice. Oh my god. Round of applause. You've discounted one mana and duplicated it. Holy moly. At like turn eight or something after playing absolute hot trash every single turn to make this happen. Incredible. Like, <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop being mean now. It, it, it's just not worth it. It's simply just not unfair enough. Uh, yeah, just garbage. By the way, to like see this side by side. If you did all of this on turn five, you could play an Arcanite Revelation the turn you launch your spacecraft. And that would give you what I mentioned before, the seven, eight stat line. Your minion would be elusive and I would have a divine shield as well. And you'd get to draw two cards and discount them if there were spells by one. Value, right? Value, value, value. Uh, Astral Phaser! Wow, what a card. It's Cleave and Worse Red card. In one card? What are they thinking? This, this power level is absurd. Uh, that would require you six mana, though, by the way, to do this. So you're going to have to wait a little bit of time. 
But potentially you could make a minion or two minions disappear for two turns while you set up the Starlight Reactor. And maybe your opponent, I don't know, hasn't put cards in their deck and they won't be able to answer this for a turn. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, Distress Signal, that's going to require you in total eight mana. So you're at like Exodar level of mana cost. That would give you four two drop minions and you would get four mana crystals back which is effectively saying that this costs zero and you could cast some more arcane spells i actually think this is the card that scares them quite a lot the idea that you could cast distress signal and actually just to jump forward with cosmic phenomenon you get your starlight reactor you get your distress signal you distress signal to go off twice it costs nothing then you play a cosmic phenomenon on top of that it goes off twice fills the board gives everything plus two plus two i think that is the actual worry of this deck it is a pretty pretty hard ask to do this though because you're going to need 10 mana crystals probably to start with then you're going to need two cards and having played three cards during the course of the game to get to that point all of which are pretty bad maybe with the exception of starlight reactor which i think without the starship tag might have seen some play as well but the other ones are all just like hot trash this is the, the worry so if you can live long enough to get to that state then maybe that's unfair enough but you're actually at 10 mana crystals at that point and there's a lot of unfair stuff you can do at 10 mana crystals i'm not sure about it uh final frontier would also be pretty big you do if you're gonna ro launch this off the starship though need 12 mana crystals which is very oh, no you need six mana no 11 you need 11 mana crystals which is very unfortunate also i said 10 before i you don't need 10 you need nine i can't count uh, but yeah, you need 11 mana crystals to do this. I actually think potentially the final frontier is also a good enough card that if you can get it casting multiple times, you keep the satellite reactor up for it. It could be good enough to win you the game. Eventually, you're going to generate enough backbreaking value that your opponent won't be able to deal with it. If this package is going to work, I think it's going to come from Starlight Reactor, Cosmic Phenomenon, and Final Frontier more so than any of the other cards. Maybe with distress signals like a slight, like you know, along that lines. Uh, and then finally, Sleep Under the Stars. What if you pick one that's not from this set? Like, one of the best arcane spells currently seen play in Standard. Uh, you get to cast that twice. You could potentially cheat out 18 mana. Actually, more than that. Well, kind of more than that. Do you need to refresh 18 mana crystals? No. Do you need to draw uh, 12 cards? Probably not. It's probably just too much of a a support type thing so i just don't see that also you need 11 mana crystals for that through various druids you could get to this 11 mana crystal situation all in all i just think this package is just trash just trash the third thing as i've mentioned though is i i think i'm paid for this starlight reactor exarch othar cosmic phenomenon final frontier and then maybe the four mana you know refresh two mana crystal some some two drops could actually see play together there is like a sort of tokeny aspect of this deck maybe with the exception of final frontier which is more of a value idea but the top three cards and then maybe the the four mana refresh two could see some play together it's just like severely hurt by the fact that you have to build a starship with it otherwise othar is unlikely to have a starship on the board for it to trigger its effect because three random arcane spells that cost two less is actually pretty decent value not fantastic but decent value I mean, to be real here, the three cards that are really actually good is Starlight Reactor, Cosmic Phenomenon, and then if you can get that with the Refresh one as well, you could generate a token deck that way. It, it, it's just a pipe dream. It's just so so weird as a package goes. I just don't get it. Won't work. All right, we also have Star Grazer. 8 mana, 8, 8, Beast. Elusive, Taunt, and Spellburst give your hero plus an 8 attack this turn and gain 8 armor. This effect is monstrous, by the way. Just in case you're wondering, this is the effect of Guff the Tough. Guff the Tough was a card reward for completing Lost in the Park, which was United in Stormwind's questline for Druid. That's a really big deal. Guff the Puff... Guff the Puff. Sorry about that, Guff the Puff. Guff the Tough has... been... just... I don't know. I don't even know what to call it. He's been pushed aside. On the, his image, he's like pushing a guy aside. I'm going to choose to believe he's not just slashing out his innards and he's pushing him aside. Uh, Star Grazer has just done that to Guff. Sure, you're spending three more mana, but you don't have to jump through the hoops of Lost in the Park, which were all pretty brutal of gaining X amount of attack per turn. You just play a spell with Star Grazer and you get 8-8 eight, eight, in stat lines on your hero, I guess. That's actually frightening. Just again, to put this into context... It's like a marriage of evasive draconate 
which was a 7 mana 7 7 taunt elusive. It does sort of imply that an 8 mana 8 8 taunt elusive would have also worked with a tribe on it. In a demon, which was an 8 mana spell, and Feral Rage, which is a 3 mana druid spell. All in all, it's sort of like bundling together 19 mana worth of stuff onto one card. Now, you do have to spell burst it, so you're going to spend more than the 8 to do this. But it's not unreasonable for druid to spell burst something. They have a lot of cheap spells. It's very reasonable. Also worth noting, Druid has got a attack package in the class via Free Spirit, Groovy Cat, stuff like Spread the Word as well. Even Peaceful Piper, which by the way would also tutor for Star Graze if you really wanted to tutor for it, since you can draw a beast. Uh, but these cards rewarded you for building a big button. Star Graze you could add to your button by giving you more attack and also giving you more survivability in armor. The big sad thing for this package is though it's missing the Cleave card, which got rotated out. Uh, whatever it was, nine, ten months ago now. Other cards this worked nice with, how about Zok? Has everyone forgot about Zok? Because I had. I thought Zok had rotated out. If you can get your Star Grazer uh, up, you spell burst it, you play Zok afterwards, you're getting two 9-9 nine, nine Quillbore with Taunt. That's potentially a lot of spooky value. It does require you to do some cheating, but Druid is typically pretty good at doing some cheating, either through gaining more mana on the turn or having more mana crystals to start with so i could see that being some big value dump as well uh, and just to you know drive home the message this is because of new heights new heights also make star grades are better normally it's a bit harder to spell burst a very very big guy since you have very little mana crystals to cast spells on but druid is the exception to all of the rules of hearthstone because they have more mana than every other class my big issue though with this card is I think its competitor is Trog Gem Tosser and Trog Gem Tosser is just better than it, right? If you're going through all the hoops to get to like 16, 19 mana crystals, you're doing this with like Mr. Vista and all of that. Is it not just better to finale Trog, a Trog Gem Tosser and make it do 16 damage or 19 damage? Uh, last I checked, 16 or 19 is more than 8. And it costs 3 mana. Now you don't get the stat line on it, nor do you get like Elusive Taunt, but... Trog, I just think, is more flexible and potentially has a higher high roll than Star Grazer. So I'm actually not sure that Star Grazer is going to see any play, even though it's a pretty strong dude. Uh, just again, to remind you, Druid has lots of cheap spells for spell bursts. Innovate, very good. Funnel Cake is like minus two mana, assuming you have a board. Also, pretty reasonable. Now, it has got elusive on the Star Grazer, so you can't hit the Star Grazer with it. Uh, but you can hit your opponent's board instead. That's always an option. Finally, we have the last legendary, and oh, boy is this a last. Ulu the Ever Drifter. 5 mana, 6, 5 beast. Each turn, this is in your hand. Gain two random choose one choices. Wow, this card is awful. Like, <laughs> just crazily awful. Unironically, I talked about, you know, Cleave earlier being from, like, the legacy cards, the classic Hearthstone cards. I'm not convinced Ulu would see play in classic i think this card is too weak for classic let alone standard in 2024 this card is horrible the effect wouldn't see play on a common card why is this a legendary sure it's fun the idea of getting random choose one effects and you know build your own choose one meaning to some degree but it's just so random and just eh. by the way i was actually asking about this how this card works with cards where the choose one effects don't make sense and by this i mean Choose one. Deal two damage to two random enemy minions. That makes sense. But then the other part of the effect just says make one dormant for two turns. What if Ulu hits that side of the effect? Does it just say make one dormant for two turns? I actually asked about this and didn't really get an answer, but I've come to the conclusion that the card text in the game for choose one cards must have an expanded text box hidden behind the actual main text box that you see on the cards, since Jerry Ray Carpenter can split choose one cards into effects that make sense. So I'm pretty certain you can just hit any choose one cards. Now, I will say, when I say you can hit, hit any, uh, Minty confirmed that you can't hit transform cards because of some, like, quirky interaction. So I'm pretty certain Ulu cannot hit Druid of the Claw, which is in standard right now. Oh, and by the way, this card respects standard and wild. So you'll only get random choose one choices from standard. You will not get them from wild unless you're playing wild, in which case you'll get the option of all the wild cards as well. Okay, let's have a look at some choose one choices. Freya would be pretty good, right? That's a pretty good choose one card if you hit one of the duplicate your hand or some copies of all other friendly minions. Maybe not the second one. You're more likely to hit the first one. Duplicate your hand is at least some sort of value. 
Drum Circle, you might get summon five Treants on top of your Ulu. That turns this into five minus more than six five. It turns it into 16, 15 of stats. That's a pretty good high roll, no? I, I agree with that. You can hit Scenarius, get plus two, plus a two, two, two Treants with Taunt, in which case you're getting 10, nine with some Taunt on there of stats. Equally, you could hit Ancient of Growth, where you don't super care about the effect too much, like the transform the tree into the 5-5 five, five Ancients effect. That's probably not going to matter most of the time. You might get Gloomstone Guardian as well, where it has Discard 2 as the choose effect. And actually, I haven't even put it on here. I've been honestly very, very generous to Ulu. The vast, vast, vast majority of choose 1 effects in Druid, in Standard, are effects that are about 1, 2, or 3 mana cost. Why would you spend... 5 mana on those choose 1 effects. You're overspending for a bad effect on a minion that isn't particularly overstated. In fact, it isn't. It's, if anything, slightly understated because a 5 mana 6 5 wouldn't see playing standard, so... This card is just simply too random. It's kind of like... Uh, God, what's she called now? The other legendary that came out in Pip that just gives you two random locations. It, it's value, sure, it's value, but it's just so random. The high rolls are like so high potential, but the low rolls are equally so low. And you're probably more likely to hit the low rolls than the high rolls, right? I just don't see this card seeing any play. I will say it also works with Disciple of Ian and Embrace of Nature if you're a psychopath and actually want to put this into your deck. Then you would get the two random choose one choices. But honestly, this might be a downside more than an upside because there's a pretty good chance one of your choose one options is going to be hot trash. Like you probably don't want to cast that. So yeah, I don't think you'll ever set this combo up. Anyway, that is Druid. I think for the most part, Druid has pretty poor cards especially considering where druid is right now i will say though druid has been pretty heavily nerfed by the recent patches so maybe there is a space open for a druid deck to fill that niche so to speak but i'm not sure anyway if you've enjoyed this reveal why don't leave like and subscribe tomorrow i think is demon hunter so i look forward to seeing what big demons we're going to get in that package uh, anyway i'll see you again then bye